It's a call that's telling me I'm here to serve. It's a need to make a difference in the world. 24 hours, day or night, these healing hands will make it right. Looking in their eyes, I know that I'm changing lives. Changing lives. Changing lives for the better. For the better. Changing lives. Welcome to this edition of the Best Docs Network in Houston, a show about some of the best doctors and procedures in the Houston area that are changing people's lives. I'm Dr. Nina, along with Jim Knox. It's also a show about doctors referred by other doctors. Let's start it off with our first top doctor, podiatrist, Dr. Gabriel Maslos. My symptoms are, you know, I don't want to walk on the ball of my foot. Uh, it, shoot, it shoots sharp pains up my leg. I mean, it, it feels like a nerve's being pinched off. Juan is a patient that presented to my office complaining of shooting pain, uh, you know, down her heel, upper leg, and uh, so immediately I started thinking maybe there's a possibility of a nerve uh, you know, compression. I told him my symptoms. He suspected what it was. He wheeled in a little mini ultrasound machine, did it right there on the spot and you know, diagnose the problem and we set up surgery because I had already tried other treatments with other doctors and it didn't work and we were done. This is your ankle joint and you have a major nerve that courses through here. There's a natural tunnel, it's called your tarsal tunnel. What happens is the tunnels get real tight and they clamp on the nerve are the protective covering which we call the flexor inoculum. The nerve tends to get stuck underneath it. So what happens is when the nerve gets compressed, it's extremely painful. What he's trying to do is avoid that numbness, and for most people it works. You know, you basically take what's pinching the nerve off away, and you make room for it, and life goes on. And the advantage of this is, like, it's not a surgery where you're really held up for a while, where you have to, you know, stay at home and you can't put weight, because I want the patient walking as soon as they can, because I don't want those tunnels to tighten up or to close up. So I want to make sure the nerves can glide. Wanda had tarsal tunnel surgery. Uh, she comes back to the office three to five days later and uh, just dressing changed. No need for x-rays because we're not doing any bone work, uh, which is great too, because if you're not doing bone work, it's not necessarily as painful. There's less swelling. Uh, and so two weeks later, sutures are out and she's walking on her own. I'm very happy. I've actually recommended him and, and all my friends that have gone to him and they've had more extensive things done to them where you know you're reattaching muscles and putting in screws you know really crazy stuff um, they they also think he's awesome the side effect that one has from nerve decompression is not pain it's lack of sensation it's numbness and that's temporary because with time they regain their sensation but it's a really easy recovery and it provides immediate relief I was unable to eat. I wouldn't travel with my husband because I was afraid. What if something in my mouth broke and I was overseas, what would I do? Five dentists told me I was an impossible case. She had uh, severe atrophy, we call it, of the upper jaw from uh, wearing the prosthesis for so long. And she had uh, m multiple missing lower teeth. My mouth never felt clean. I had no confidence. Um, I wouldn't get, get around a lot of people and I have a big personality and that upset me because I couldn't get around a lot of people. And so what we talked to her about was reconstruction of the entire uh, upper and lower uh, jaw and, and we also did uh, bilateral or both sides uh, sinus grafting. What this, uh, it's a sinus elevation procedure where we lift up the, the uh, membrane that's in the sinus, we put synthetic uh, bone in that, in that uh, uh, area and uh, allow that to solidify, then we can come back with implants and have a, much, uh, have a, a good base for the implants to fuse to the, the synthetic and host bone. It sounds horrible because the surgery, it looks scary. Compared to the pain that you've gone through not having teeth, it was no big deal. In this world, maybe nothing is permanent, 
But in our view, um, if the implants are placed properly, if they're restored properly, and they are maintained properly, they should last the patient indefinitely. I'm more healthier now. I'm not eating pizza and french fries and bread and cinnamon rolls. I'm eating fruit and carrots and all the vegetables. I just can't believe I've, and my taste, my, my mouth feels clean all the time. We're interested in, in restoring patients' self-confidence uh, and also their quality of life. And uh, so we're interested in both the, how it looks and how it works and how it functions. When he did the surgery, I felt like I'd known him for a hundred years. He was just that awesome. And he, very, he doesn't tell you anything that he doesn't believe. It's very, it's very emotional for me because I never dreamed I'd be able to have this done. Tiku broke his jaw growing up and his teeth never lined up until he met oral surgeon Dr. Paul Metz. To find out more about Tiku's story and other life-changing stories, log on to BestDocsNetwork.com. People who typically see me are people either have a nasal airway obstruction problem or those who are concerned about the appearance of their nose. I had rhinoplasty done. I had a bump in my nose and um, I had fallen in a store and it had swollen up so I came to see Dr. Eisman to make sure it wasn't broken and it wasn't. But then we got to talking about my situation and he told me that he could repair my nose for me. We do an internal exam and make sure there are, other, there are not other problems that have to be addressed as well, such as sinus problems. Uh, septal deviation problems, uh, scarring from trauma, or even some congenital problems that interfere with breathing. I've had chronic sinus problems um, throughout my life, and Dr. Eisman said I had a deviated septum, and he also repaired that during the surgery. And since then, I hardly have sinus infections anymore. I have much better health. It's about an hour and a half through the operation, about an hour in the recovery area, and they go home. They have some packing that's in there overnight, Taping and the dressing is to get the skin to recontour because we're working on the bone and cartilage and the skin has to redistribute itself and uh, adhere to the underlying uh, cartilage and bone so it, it regrapes properly. As far as recovery, um, he gave me an outline and directions with it. He also gave me a, a list of possible problems that could result from any surgery. So I was well informed and I was prepared for the procedure and the outcome. This is her post-operatively, her pre-operative pictures. Uh, this is a, probably about two months after the surgery, which is generally when we take the post-operative pictures and then we have them come back, you know, in a year later also. My health is better and I just feel better about myself because I know my nose has been repaired and I like the way it looks now and it makes a huge difference in your life. It's probably one of the most common operations, but also one of the most difficult ones, too. But it's a, it's a wonderful operation, and it's a, it has such a dramatic change in someone's appearance. Very dramatic for the patient, and, and very rewarding for the physician. Hypertension, this is a bad disease. It causes two main problems, strokes and heart attacks. Neither of those are good. What are the magic numbers in hypertension? Well, 120 over 80 is normal. At 140 over 90 and above, we call hypertension. When you're at 160 over 110, that's when we get upset and need to become aggressive with our treatment. When you get to be 180 over 120, that's when we really get upset and that's the time to go to the emergency room for urgent or emergent treatment. What can you do to prevent hypertension or to treat it once you get it? Well, weight loss is the most important thing because being heavy is one of the biggest risk factors for becoming hypertensive. Also, lowering the salt in your diet is a good idea. You can use the DASH diet, D-A-S-H. You can find that on the internet anywhere. Getting adequate sleep and adequate exercise will reduce your blood pressure also. They say that emotional tension causes hypertension, and that is true, so relax and enjoy your life, lose weight and exercise, and your blood pressure will come down. I was experiencing a lot of back pain and a lot of uh, side pain. Uh, every once in a while I'd be, I would lift something and then I would end up having a back spasm. I take care of mostly 
back and neck pain. So chronic pain that people have had for six months or longer. And that could be from a herniated disc or degenerative disc. I actually had herniated disc and some uh, bones that seemed to be split. My daughter being a brand new daughter, you know, you'd pick her up and uh, try to hold her and stuff. And, you know, yes, you would tolerate the pain to be able to pick up your baby, but, uh, you know, with getting this fixed and being able to lift and hold and maintain and walk and carry and play with my daughter. What happens when they first come in is they get evaluated. We take a full history. We find out about their story, how long they've had symptoms, exactly what are their symptoms, what treatments they've tried so far. If they've not tried at least one or two non-operative treatments, we highly encourage them to undergo some physical therapy first or injections or other non-operative treatments. Uh, once he did the preliminary test, and he discovered that, you know, I just need, I was better off to be able to go in and have surgery. We insert the bone down here and then put a metal clamp to hold it in place. So eventually, this bone will fuse to that bone and it will also fuse to that bone. I've always been an athlete. If it wasn't for Dr. Siddiqui, then I wouldn't be able to be back up and walking and running again. I would say to anyone out there who is suffering from chronic pain, especially if you've tried injections, tried physical therapy, and all kinds of other braces and special mattresses and magnets and, and all these things that, that just come in and get evaluated. We can't promise that we can fix everybody, but the vast majority of people, there's quite often something we can do. And now with minimally invasive surgery, it's not such a traumatic and long drawn out process to undergo surgical treatment. You will feel a lot better once it's all said and done. Thank you, Dr. Siddiqui. Don't forget, for more life-changing stories, just like you've seen so far in today's broadcast, head to the website. It's bestdocsnetwork.com, bestdocsnetwork.com. Yes, now here's our next top doctor, Dr. Robert Marvin. He's one of the best bariatric surgeons in the Houston area. The difference with the sleeve uh, compared to the gastric bypass is that there's no malabsorptive component to the surgery. It avoids some of the long-term issues that can happen with the gastric bypass. In particular, there are very few uh, vitamin and mineral deficiencies later because everything goes down the normal way. The gold standard operation, of course, is the gastric bypass. It's been around for 50 years. It has very predictable weight loss. What we're seeing is uh, patients who are a year out from surgery who've lost 60, 70, or 80 percent of their extra body weight. Well, I had what's called the Ruin Y, is where they make a small pouch um, out of the stomach and they divert part of the intestines so that I have a little bit of malabsorption. So I have to supplement my diet with uh, several vitamins that would otherwise not be absorbed through part of the intestines. Gene had gone and, and had a lap band operation done previously with another surgeon. And like some of the lap band patients, she, what she'd experienced was uh, a frustrating cycle of, of having the band adjusted to a certain tightness and getting some difficult symptoms from that, uh, only to have it loosened to make those symptoms go away and then uh, losing a little bit of weight and then gaining it back. And she has lost somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, two thirds of her extra body weight from the level that she was at with the gastric bypass, two-thirds of the weight has gone away. My friends comment that I have more pep in my step and I'm able to work more days in a row and longer hours and not feel fatigued. I looked at the breakdown for the last 12 months and it appears that about 74% of the patients are choosing the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. Most of the rest of the patients are choosing a gastric bypass and we're doing very few lap bands currently mostly because the weight loss just isn't as predictable with the lap bands and there are some long-term issues. Go to the seminars, especially Dr. Marvin, who is very open, explains things in a very simple way for everyone to understand. We have numerous support groups here in Houston and that has been my main success. Jill came to see me for hearing loss. And then while she was here, she's also talking about, she told me she had some allergy problems, and then also um, the snoring, and, and uh, it was feeling like she had insomnia, and she couldn't stay asleep during the night, she was tired during the day, wake up with a dry mouth. I think you have sleep apnea. 
I'm going, huh, what's sleep apnea? He said, well, sleep apnea is where you, you don't get any REM sleep and you, you don't sleep well. Are you tired a lot? I said, I've always been tired. We obtained a sleep study and found out that she had, you know, a lot of sleep fragmentation from snoring and from uh, sleep apnea. He said, well, we'd like to do the second test, of course. We diagnosed the fact that you do have a sleep apnea. So, went in another night, electrodes, but I had a mask this time. And I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning. I, you know, it was like, wow! I mean, jeez, it was like, I am so rested. So he didn't have to do a hard sell or anything with me. I mean, he said, you need a BiPAP machine. We've decided that, and this is why. And he sat down and explained everything to me. If you have the other effective treatment option, and you decide to have surgery, and there's a, something that I think that we're going to do that has a good chance of making you better, then let's do it. But for some people, that's just not their best interest, you know? And she's happy, you know? Jill sleeps every night, has no complaints. She loves it. It's safe. It's effective. It's guaranteed to work. Are we going to beat that with a surgery? No, we're not. My coworkers at the time noticed an immediate difference between, I mean, I didn't tell them what was going on, but they noticed an immediate difference in my demeanor and my approachability. <laughs> if that therapy makes you feel great, I just think that your opinion of that therapy is going to change, right? Yeah. Now, if you can't use it, you know, you're claustrophobic, and there's you have an obvious anatomic problem, and sure, let's go down this other path and we'll make you better. But better and perfect aren't the same, you know? It's made a great impact. It's, it's really, um, the only thing I miss, and this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm used to having 22 hours in the day, as opposed to 16 or 17, you know? And I can't get as much done as I used to get done because I'm sleeping. But the trade-off is great. What we want to do is try to help a woman uh, get through this time frame with the intense symptomatology. According to Dr. Meredith Morgan, intervention and management needs to be tailored to the level of severity. Uh, for mild hot flashes, home remedy self-management techniques are, are effective. For some women, yoga will work. Other women, uh, strenuous exercise. On average, you can't say that either one of them really works for everybody. But if it's good enough for an individual woman, it's good enough, and that's all she needs. There is a technique of breathing that's um, derived from transcendental meditation that actually has been studied quite a bit and found to be quite effective. There are two sets of data on the research, and there are different sets of outcomes and benefits and hazards involved in using hormones. In general, we try to start with a low dose and let the patient titrate up to a level that will produce a circulating estrogen level that's satisfactory for her response. Now there are concerns with hormone therapy. What Dr. Morgan would like to point out is that there are three major concerns against the others. First, breast cancer, everybody's concerned about breast cancer. Uh, second is heart attacks, and that's, that's serious. But the most common one that we really address all the time is estrogen, and there's been very little historical interest. Your question was, what are we doing now as opposed to 10 years ago? Uh, we really haven't changed much in our concept about blood clots. Uh, for that reason, our preference is to try to use the non-pill forms of estrogen as much as possible. The pills go through the liver and, simply put, can increase blood clotting chemicals and the risk of blood clotting. Now the most common question for most women for Dr. Morgan is, how will I know what I'm going to be confronted with? Well, the good news, according to Dr. Meredith Morgan, is that menopause is controllable basic message I'd like you to get is there are many ways to approach this. This is not going to be incapacitating. It's controllable. Maybe the control is the goal. But we're not going to have terminal hot flashes. I think there's a lot of confusion now about exactly what an allergist is because a lot of people do allergy testing that are not board certified in allergy and immunology. So what we see actually in this practice is not always allergy, but people come to us because they think that it might be allergy. According to Dr. Dickens, allergies really come down to having a problem with the immune system. 
Allergy is really just an abnormal response of the immune system that some people have and they react to um, things in the environment that really aren't harmful but if you happen to have an abnormal antibody called an IgE antibody then you start to react to things and the response actually harms you more than it harms that ragweed pollen. Many know living in Houston can cause allergy problems. The reason? I would say because we're very humid and um, moist and warm, we see a lot of mold problems here and people can develop not only allergies but they can develop um, uh, a chronic allergic reaction to that in their nose and wind up having polyps and then develop asthma, um, those kind of problems. So we see a lot of mold because it's always either heavy or extremely heavy. Uh, dust mites because uh, the environment is again very moist and warm and they can get down in the carpet and in, into your homes. When it comes to helping people with allergies, Dr. Dickens Allergy Clinic does it in a unique and special way. We try to have the nice art in the office that they feel very comfortable when they're here, um, that it's not sterile, um, that, the, that the staff knows them well over the years, and we try to spend a lot of time knowing their particular story and, and how they would uh, respond best. So I really think it takes your it takes a village in a way, and, and I have a very nice village here. Wonderful staff, very well trained to be able to recognize different kinds of allergic um, emergencies and treat them quickly and call the doctor when necessary and really just make the patients feel very secure. That's what we try to do. Kimberly, who loves to travel due to her job, could hardly walk due to severe foot pain until she met Dr. Gabriel Maslow. To find out more about Kimberly's story and other life-changing stories, log on to BestDocsNetwork.com. After Kimper was born, um, he had a, a newborn hearing test at the hospital. So we were taken to several other doctors to find out more about his hearing and hearing loss. We'd heard about getting cochlear implants and had done some research on them, and that's kind of the road we decided that we wanted to take. A cochlear implant is truly a bionic ear. It is the only available full replacement for a human special sensory function. When he was born, we found out um, in the hospital before we even left, you know, it kind of took the, the joy and excitement out of having a baby. You know, all of a sudden told that there may be a potential problem with your son. Because, you know, nobody wants to find out that something is, you know, wrong with their child, especially our first child. It's a day surgery type procedure, typically. Maybe small children and babies would spend the night. But this surgery takes no more than about an hour and a half to two hours to do. That portion is allowed to heal and then a very specialized computer is used on the outside called the processor. And that processor takes all the sound in the environment, digitizes it, and sends it to the implant via an FM signal. And when they first turn him on, he'd never ever heard sound. So um, they start him off very quietly and slow, so not to scare him, you know, because it's a whole new world to him. In the second, that we had our first appointment with Dr. Peters, he said, uh, okay, you know, my staff will take care of everything, and they did. In the case of Kemper, uh, who was identified early and whose parents wanted to be very proactive, very aggressive, and doing everything they could for him, uh, they presented early on so that by the time um, I saw them and that we had completed all of the evaluations at nine months, not only was he ready for an implant, but I felt he was old enough and he had grown enough that we could do both ears at the same time. It really has changed his life. He turned into a different baby. He was just a lot happier, and it's just like his, his whole world kind of opened up. But yeah, we, we think very highly of, of Dr. Peters. <laughs> I was having problems with incontinence, needless to say, and that's something women don't like to talk about. So it's one of those things you just really sort of keep to yourself where you don't even talk to your best friend about it. This was something that, you know, had been bothering me for a long time. Genotide is a treatment for stress urinary incontinence, urgency incontinence, urinary urgency frequency issues, as well as 
rectal incontinence and rectal tone issues. As a healthcare professional myself, I was actually researching um, procedures that were non-surgical that could maybe help alleviate some of the urinary symptoms. And then that's when I found out about genotide and Dr. Carol Norton at Finer Touch. You get to know where every restroom is in town, needless to say, but it's just, so this was something that, you know, it takes control of your life. And to finally be able to say, I've got the freedom to, you know, live like a normal woman should, you know, without having to always plan for it. The treatment is done uh, in the office. It takes about an hour to do the procedure. Uh, and there are generally two to four treatments required. The, the number of treatments really just depends on whether or not we've reached the end point, which is resolution of symptoms. And uh, you can actually see the tissue tightening uh, so we're looking for that tightening effect to hold between treatments. You can't go to just any doctor and have this done. So Dr. Norton is just, you know, right on top of the newest technology. And she's one of only like four doctors here in the U.S. that have been totally trained on this. So she, you know, was so excited to hear about it. Basically incorporates the use of an infrared technology to help tighten the tissue of the vulva and vaginal area in a way that's very natural to it. Now I'm probably 80 to 85 percent of my symptoms are improved and for me that is wonderful. I would say to any woman if this is a problem that you're having come talk to Dr. Norton and the Finer Touch because you do have hope out there. I had two children and I nursed them both and my breasts were completely saggy and gone. Aisha came to me after she had two children. She was interested in improving the appearance of her breast after uh, breastfeeding and childbearing. They had lost some of the fullness and uh, that typically happens after uh, giving birth. I simply wanted to go back to the way I looked before I had children. I didn't want to look unnatural in any way, and he completely understood that, and he had a very good understanding of what both me and my husband wanted. That's the most common question, is can they get that body back after children? They may not necessarily get that exact body, but we certainly can remove the extra skin, tighten up their waist, and give them that figure back that they had before. Um, the procedure went very well, and the recovery time was Easier than I thought. I mean, I thought the tummy tuck, which I didn't, almost didn't want to do in the beginning, and I ended up doing, which I'm very happy with, was actually much easier than the breast augmentation. Um, I was probably in bed for about five days, and then not really back to myself for about two weeks, but four to six weeks after that, I was completely fine, completely fine, like nothing had happened. I felt great. Typically, after having children, women have extra skin, and some fat along their tummy as well as on their hips. And this is, even with all the exercising, many people can't lose that weight. And so if they've completed their childbearing, that's the perfect candidate. With the breast, many times again, there's postpartum involution of the breast. So many times again, after childbearing, they can't reverse this effect. And again, that's a good candidate. Um, he was very, very nice. He was very, um apical to my needs, um, you know, he talked to both to me and my husband about what kind of results I wanted. Someone who, like herself, who's very fit and uh, wanted to enhance the appearance of her breast after childbearing, this was a perfect case for her. And he was so professional and so nice, it was fantastic, fantastic experience. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Best Docs Network in Houston. Don't forget, visit our website for more information on some of these amazing doctors at bestdocsnetwork.com. That's right. More life-changing stories. Check the doctors out, bestdocsnetwork.com. And also, if you have a life-changing story, a doctor that has helped change your life, we would love to hear from you. Send us an email, info at bestdocsnetwork.com. So long, everyone. We'll see you next week.